All right, level two of Avalon, the breakdown. What I tried to do here was add some passing chords. So as you see, we have a G minor, and then we have our next form of G minor is here. So in between here and here, we could add So I'm G minor, passing chord diminished, G minor, passing chord diminished, G minor, passing chord diminished, G minor to C7. So whenever you have the notes outside of the chord tones, you know your inversions here, you could put a diminished in those spots that don't have chord tones. Okay, and this is a great example to show you how to do that. So, and it's a great way to spice up a chord melody because it's that tension release. Now I go to an F6, nice substitution, and again, a passing chord diminished in between the F6 and the F major 7. There are your chord tones. So in between, okay, great way to use these passing chords or on the, the notes that are outside of the chord tones. So once again, from the beginning. F6. Diminished, passing chord to an F major 7th. Now here we're using a C 7th, and then we're going to go right to the minor 7th, that G minor 7th, C 7, G minor 7th, because it's the substitution, the 2, 5 substitution. Then we're going to stay with that minor 7th to the 7th, C 7th. Minor, minor, back to C7. Now a C augmented. And augmented means a raised fifth. Okay, and that leads to F major seventh. Nice substitution for an F chord. Back to the augmented for the F major seventh. Now, talked about this already, but we go from the root down to the sixth dominant. We can go one step at a time from the root down to the six, D7. And that's what I did with ninth chords. Can mm. okay, I use a little rhythm? One and two, three, four. A little phrasing, offbeat, one. Ah, ah. Okay, now I just stay with the seventh. E flat nine to D nine, a chromatic approach. Okay, it has a nice, nice little touch there, nice little spice up there. G minor seventh, pretty simple, straight ahead inversion. Melody note A up to the B flat minor six. Now, for bar 25, I use two notes only, double stops. An A and a C, then a C and an F, an F and an A, and an A and a C. The notes of the F chord in succession. Hear that? Now a D seventh with the ninth. Phrasing there, one, two, three, four, and two. G minor seventh. Then I use a C13 with a flat nine in the bass. It's a great chord. Okay, it's like this one, except I'm displacing that D flat down to here. And then an F. And a common ending when you have a root note for the ending is to move up a half step, keeping the F to a G flat major seventh. 
back to F. Okay, so those last eight measures, the double stops. So once again, diminished the passing chords. Same thing here with the passing chord, diminished to the major seventh. Now we go right to the G minor seventh substitution to the C. C augmented, which is a great substitution that leads to the one chord, the major chord, F major seventh. Once again, the augmented to the F major seventh. And then the walk down. One. Half step. Minor seventh. Let it ring. Nice clean B flat minor six. Now the double stops to the D seventh, the G minor seventh, C thirteen with that D flat in the bass, and then F, G flat, F. Very cool approach. Take your time. Make sure each chord is clean. Make sure you understand what chord you're playing. Just don't put your fingers where the tab says. Really know, oh, this is a F6, this is a G minor 7, an augmented. Really understand and take the time necessary to know what chord you're on. It's a very important step to making these chord melody arrangements. So now let's move on to level three. <laughs> Avalon, level three, the breakdown. So I added some tempo, kind of got it swinging a little bit. And one thing I try to do in this is get the right hand going. So if we just kind of, you know, just get the right hand moving like this, up and down, and then give some off beats, almost like a drum solo or a tap dance solo. Okay, because these are the rhythms we're going to use to try to spice it up a little bit. This is like a swing tune, so we're not going to get too intricate on all the inversions, but we're going to swing it using the right hand. Right? So we're using a lot of right hand, a lot of rhythm. did there was I had a little blues lick. Okay, we don't always have to stick so straight to the melody, especially when we have a long time of a melody note. For instance, on the that holds a long time, so why not use a little, little riffs, little blues licks? It's a great way to, uh, something to add to your chord melody. So, rhythm. on that F chord. Now you're on C for the next phrase, the low C bass note. That's why it's important to know the bass notes of the chords you're playing. 
So you can have a run and go down to the low bass note. There's a great example of it. Okay, once again, from the top, rhythm, right hand. Right to the rhythm. And you can mix it up. Those are half notes, you can go. Thing that's kind of swinging along here. We want to let this hand do the work. Okay? And then again, augmented. Now here I just started playing some bluesy licks. So I played a lick for three bars, rest on that beat, and use that walk down. Right? So check it out from bar nine. So here, let's just have a hold instead of doing that. All right, we can go. And there, I'm taking the B flat minor sixth, and I'm substituting B flat minor seventh with the ninth, and then to the B flat minor sixth. Okay, so it's a way to use your right hand in rhythm to make a chord melody arrangement, especially on a more up tempo chord melody. Because a lot of times chord melody is just ballads. A lot of people show ballads for chord melody and slow tempo songs, which it's made for that. But when you're playing a up-tempo chord melody, you have to use your right hand, your picking hand, your rhythm hand more. Rather than trying to fill it all up with this hand, you're using this hand. Okay, so that takes us to our bar 25. <laughs> I'm just using inversions of an F chord. And I'm going ba da ba da da ba da da ba da da ba 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 So you just have to let your right hand go. There's no specific rhythms. There's no one rhythm to use. This is where you get creative with the rhythm. You play what you're feeling. You've heard that expression many times. Well, this is the where you're feeling it, your right hand. Okay, so don't be afraid to really give it a good go when it comes time to use your right hand with the different rhythms. You know, play what you're feeling. That's another approach to take with the chord melody, especially on this one because, again, it's an up-tempo song. So if you're playing chord melody on up-tempo songs, you don't want to have to go too much on your hands. You're never going to be able to get there because the tempo is too quick. So you use this hand to really spice it up. Okay, so once again, we have... Then a fill to the bass note. Rhythm. Now blues. So it's a nice way to use medium tempo and swing tempo tunes with chord melody. It's by using rhythm, a lot of different rhythms, playing it the way you feel it, as they say, and that comes from this hand. So as you can see, rhythm plays an important part in an up-tempo or medium-tempo chord melody because we don't want to be using a whole bunch of different chords and moving so much we're not going to be able to get there because the tempo is going to be too fast. So we need to rely on more rhythmic playing. Okay, this is a lot of fun, this tune, to play because you can really let yourself go. You can really have a lot of fun with that right hand playing the rhythm. 
So uh, try to enjoy the, the process and try to come up with a bunch of different rhythms and, and uh, you know, even some stock jazz rhythms that you might know. You know, try to put them in there. The fills, all those licks you've been learning all these years, now's the time to put it in. You know, when you have an F chord for four beats, you put in and have some fun with those blues licks and, and major licks you've been learning. And that's the way to have a lot of fun with this tune.